All right, you guys, sorry for that false start. Um, we're going to start the translation now. Sorry, I had a late start today. Like every Monday, because it's very important that the economy, the popular economy, and with microeconomy, the family's economy, we are going to present who's who in the prices of combustibles. We have to do this every week in order to maintain a stable pri uh, pr uh, prices for gas, diesel, gas, and also electricity because Even though you can't compare it in the case of electricity, generally the prices have not gone up. We're complying with our commitment of not raising prices of energy uh, level. And we're complying with that because we comply with our commitments. There are no elevated gas prices or gas hikes. I know that the uh, media doesn't want to put that out there because it's not their function, but yes, it is mine. I am in charge of that. Yes, I do have to say it so that the citizens will know that we are not the same to what the previous people were that came without asking that they were going to continue to use that same uh, unpopular politics and at this time they were doing their fiscal reforms and their laboral reforms and their energy reforms and education reforms. And they didn't even talk about that at the, in their campaigns. So that is why, yes, we are saying that we have not raised the prices. And, that, and this helps very much the popular economy. That is what's very important for us to strengthen. So we're going to talk to Ricardo uh, to let us know what the prices are. Hello, Mr. President, and hello to everyone. The prices of gasoline regular gasoline, the price with the highest was Tecamac. Tw public price is 21.49 per liter, and it's 3.68 per liter. And the lowest one was Costco gas in Tabasco, which has been making a great effort to maintain a low price and we're very grateful to the uh, effort that they're making and their support. And in the case of premium gasoline, the highest price was Orsan del Norte, and public price is 21.99, and a margin of 13 per, per liter, or three. And the most economical was Costa Cost, Calcos, <laughs> Veracruz, a margin of 43 cents per liter. And diesel was higher at Hermosillo, Sonora, 22.59. The most economical was um, 
Uh, Oro Verde in Tapa, Tabasco is 19.19. That uh, where it has to do with brands, they've noticed the ones that have um, generic prices, they there hasn't been very much change in the last two months. And verifying, they realized 361 verifications. And they visited, and, and they attended to those 361 because, so they used an app. Three did not allow themselves to be verified. So, so the, the three did not allow them. So they're giving the names of the ones that did not allow themselves to be tested. So the consumers at the moment will will not uh, want to be going to them because they'll know that there's something going on that they're hiding. So, so the people will have to kind of make their mark by not going. So there's a lot of people using the app. 88,770 are using unloading the or downloading the app. So now it looks like also can be used with iPhone, I guess. That's nice. So the best price. So you can see what all the prices are there. The premium gas. Okay. So you can see there the prices. So I'm letting them show you because there's a slideshow. It's better for me not to talk. Um, you can just see what they are. I just moved my video out of the way so you guys won't be blocked. So now, <laughs> we're going back to the other one. Okay. So, so you can see that there is a... Um, Five of the ones that verified had infractions. So they're going to start. Um, they're going to start some kind of a program to control. Um, the ones that are being uh, fraudulent. So 3% had um, mm. So that was it. So that's the who's who on the prices of combustibles. 
And if you would like, we'll go ahead and start asking questions and answers. Last Friday, well, we, um, we discovered that there was hacking uh, in Twitter, and there was threats against your person, and then we found out that it was an attack, general attack, and so the alerts were sent, and so first, to know if they talked, if they gave you more information regarding that. And second is, does this affect your plan of personal security? And third, if it changes the opinion that you gave us regarding your adversaries when you applauded them for behaving well and not doing anything violent. Yes, I think that in political uh, term, there is an opposition that I would say is responsible. In a democracy, there has to be opposition. You have to guarantee um, from the the authority needs to give them the right to to dissent. We're trying to have a authentic democracy, not a dictatorship. And so, of course, there's causes that are profound. It's a, a transformation. It's not just a change of government. It's a change of regimen. And we have not had major problems. The conservatives have not been able to, or become uh, comforted by a reactionary group like they have in, in other t transformations over, um, especially like they articulated when the movement of reform happened. This has not happened or been come into practice. So what there is is some questions and critiques, but they're normal. And I would tell you that it's actually pretty tranquil, and I celebrate it, that, the, that we have uh, <laughs> We, that they give us adversaries to, to uh, win. And regarding the, um, the, regarding the threats that were made on Twitter, it's part of their responsibility that we have. But even so, I have my conscience that's clear. No. I am not a coward. I am a human, and I've said it before, that you do have fears, like anyone else. But I am not a coward. And I am not taking a single step backwards related to the uh, purpose to, to uh, change or transform the country. So we're going forward, and I'm going to continue to tell you to request and dem and tell you to no have no violence and to every one of us to behave well. Only when you are good can you be happy. <laughs> That's what I can respond to you. Yes, but... Uh, like you say, it's a strategy, inclusively, it's universal, it's applied throughout the world. And that's what I've been told. I continue to go throughout the country. And this weekend I was in Oaxaca, Guautla, Temialta. And one, oh my goodness, the names he says are hard. Doc 
con Lula. A beautiful state of Oaxaca that is the richest in culture of all the states. It's one of the richest cultures in the whole world, Oaxaca. Like Mexico, it's extraordinary. But I am very respectful. However, it's very important to know Mexico because sometimes your aspirations may be to go to other countries to see them. But if you don't even know Mexico, if you get to know Mexico, you'll be very satisfied and very strengthened spiritually. Because it's a country with lots of natural beauty and with a people that is extraordinary. Full, very full with culture. It's incredible what you see in our country regarding art, regarding culture, tradition, the food, all of it can be enjoyed in our country. It w I wish that we could continue to evoke uh, people that who those who that are involved in tourism that they can make it something not so expensive maybe via uh, buses there's promotions that are made or created for example they have um, buses that go from Astapalapa, from Tenesa, from the city of Mexico, and they go to Chiapas, and they even go to Cancun, and they come back. And it's not very expensive for those who can for that trip. I celebrated a lot that you do this tourism so that we can support because the Secretary of Tourism should make some kind of a plan, a program that somehow like that so that they can go to Chapa, North, Chihuahua and to travel to Chepe. Uh, the Barrancas of Copper to, to go across the whole uh, Sierra Taromara and to go to Sinaloa, Los Mochis. That is extraordinary. To go from Durango to Mazatlán. the whole peninsula of California from Ensenada to Los Cabos. It's a whole week to go like a turtle like from South Pacific of uh, Baja California, Loreto. Well, there's a lot. Somewhere Negro. Oh, and the whales in February and March. Yes, you need to get and 
happy to go to Veracruz, San Luis Potosí, Aguasteca. Here in the city of Mexico, in the museums of the country, of the city, you can't go through all of them. The whole history of our country here, the museum of the National Palace. Imagine that. See what's happened here? As of five centuries, here in Palacio, that they constructed where the temples used to be of Tenochtitlan. And here they had 10 kings. And sometimes they had conflicts with those that were in charge of the church. And they used to have confrontations. And one time it was burned, the palace because there was a confrontation with the Episcopal of the church. So then that, that uh, uh, king and the bishop, and they reconstructed it. And the whole history of Mexico here. So we, we are inviting you to get to know our beloved Mexico. which is an extraordinary country. Overall, especially because of the, the gentleness of its people. So here we go. So he's going to start with uh, a woman, and then he's going to go man, woman, man, woman. So you go. I'm sorry, I can't make out what she's saying. There's some kind of a union uh, a question, and he's saying there has to be freedom of, of the unions, and the Secretary of Work needs to be seen by him. Unfortunately, it's something lamentable that there's division in these syndicates or unions. It's been affected a lot, the syndicate or uh, unions. It's been damaged during the neoliberal period because the syndicate was exemplary before. I would say it was the most democratic in Mexico, the Mexican of, uh, uh, Union of Electricians. And, and they proposed to destroy it. Uh, like as a plan because it got in their way in the application of neoliberal politics to such an extent that it disappeared the, the, that the company the light company of electricity and they let go 40,000 employees and so then they did some labor to dis divide the workers so I hope, I'm hopeful that, that they will resolve this using um, friendship of the, of the workers, and that it be they that decide in a democratic way who should represent them. We, in effect, do not, um, we can, we do not 
have unions that are preference or uh, preferred. We don't get involved in that. That is not the thing the government does. And it's got to do something with the workers. And we want them to have a um, democratic uh, union or syndicate. On the weekend, there was a march regarding uh, they're making a petition to one of the main points that they're asking is that that the military not be in charge of public security. What is your response to that? And what have you thought about that? That little by little will the National Guard will become more civil than military? No. It's been integrated, the National Guard. It's a constitutional reform that's approved by everyone. There was a consensus. What we are doing now is to consolidate this institution, that it should have presence in the, all the regions of the country and that they have the unit enough people, because before they had none. I've said it many times, they had no protection. Mexicans were in a state of, in def of defenses, defenselessness regarding security. There was no corporation there to guarantee uh, peace and tranquility, or, or public security especially. But that was needed, the uh, guard. And it will continue to grow every time more until it gets to 140,000 units, or that means people, elements, and 266 coordinations or coordinated units. So the acts or the things that happened on the weekend, as I was informed, and supporting or backing the attitude of the chief of government, Claudia Schiffman. I believe she behaved well, but now maybe the conservatives are, are going to start to say that we need a heavy hand because that's how they are. The truth with all respect is they're very hypocritical. However, let's not use force. Like Juarez used to say, everything using reason and using the rights and nothing by force. And what we've said on other occasions and in other cases and other occasions is that the citizens and now they're the force of public opinion. They're the ones that control it. So when there's excesses, then the citizens themselves are the judges. Not, not necessarily the authorities. It's to be in charge, but to be to, um, to obey what the people want. It's doing it in a responsible way. No excesses, no violence, no violence. Yes. If we intervene by force, public force, then you aggravate the conflict. And now, imagine 
the government being accused as being repressive. And not only that, but you don't resolve anything with the use of force. And of course, we need to investigate in case there was some uh, 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 newspaper people that were injured. Yes, that has to be investigated. And they have to sanction that. However, you can't get involved to try to resolve the problem with the use of force. We need to look for dialogue and understanding. But, but, but we have to uh, maintain order. You need to make sure that whoever's turn it is to speak. Otherwise, it becomes a debate. So it wasn't her turn to speak. So we'll answer everything, but we have to do it in order. So you were asking questions. So, so does the uh, federal government going to uh, allow that or concede to it? No, that's already been resolved. It was a disaster. This, the way in which they supposedly guaranteed public security. So now we're utilizing the professional experience, discipline of the um, armies and military. The Secretary of Marines, it's a great support. They're backing us. <coughs> In order to come to come to protective actions to protect the citizens. And I am hopeful or expecting that soon we will uh, lower the incidence of violence because the most important thing of all is to attend to the causes that cause violence, and we are doing that. I have always said that 80% of the problem has to do with, with attending to the needs of the people that there be work, that there be well-being, that you attend to the youth, that there be good examples from the authorities. That, be, that means that there not be corruption in the government so that no one has an excuse. And they start taking the uh, road of antisocial conduct. And that's very important. And that's what we're doing. We're advancing very much, very much in that sense. And so the country's becoming more serene day by day, every morning, our country. Is it valid that the government? will not uh, do any follow-up on who causes all these disasters and attacks? And is it just due to the uh, aggravations and attacks and damages done? And it's valid. Is, is this what we're going to be seeing constantly, constantly in the capital? And also in other locations, they've seen that they've been doing trying to contain these without repressing. And uh, if we wanted to, I'm from Multimedios, Micha. From Millennia? No? Let it be very clear. This is how it's going to be. 
in effect. You're asking if we're going to continue to, to see these things? Or is the government going to continue to act like they did this weekend? Yes. We are not going to use force. This is not an authoritarian, uh, authoritative, uh, or authoritarian government. We are not going to use violence. And I repeat, I do not want it to go in one ear and out the other. What Juarez used to say, nothing by force, everything using right and reason. And besides that, to underline this point, I am party to of the nine nonviolence, and I reformed and study and lectures of Gandhi, Mandela. Luther King, Martin Luther King. I do not believe in the use of violence and force as an option, as an alternative. Violence cannot be confronted with violence, and bad cannot be confronted with bad. You confront bad doing well, using peace and tranquility. They are fruits of justice. Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. That's what politics are for. That's what it was invented for, to it prevent confrontation, to prevent violence. So therefore, nothing that has to do with measures that are authoritarian. We are not the same. I am making a call out to those that are uh, protesting and manifesting to not be doing it or to do it in a responsible way without violence, without affecting the citizens, and to take care of the patrimony of the culture, of the art, arts of Mexico, of all of us. It belongs to all of us, to the Mexicans. Why would we not protect our art from of independence? It's a monument that's very important. And in this, all of us, we have to behave in a responsible way. I am not a porfirista. The angel that was um, placed by Porfirio Diaz It was part of the celebrations of the century. I could even say, I could be, I could say it's a work or product of of a government that was authoritarian and dictatorial. But it's part of our culture, our inheritance, our artist. Uh, culture, and we need to take care of it. Even if it was of the reform period, we cannot vandalize like they've done. The statues that, of course, we're going to reconstruct from the Paseo of Reforma, they're right there. There are our heroes that fought in the reform and the intervention, why are we not going to respect that? What does a movement that has to do with <coughs> a 
with a just cause. And in this case, the defense of women with destruction. Can't we do it in a peaceful way? Why does it have to be with violence? Or I do not believe in that. I don't believe that the way of violence is an option or an alternative. So therefore, yes, we're going to continue to act with tolerance. And it is prohibited to repress. It is prohibited. So, but what happened on, that what happened, but women are very upset because they've been, they've had a lot of female violence or feminine violence, and it, they, but perhaps maybe they could start making a change in the strategy so that women could have more palpable um, um, ways so that women can live free of violence. Yes, we're all fighting for that purpose from six in the morning and sometimes even before that. That is our principal uh, topic, to guarantee the, the safety of men and women. We are very busy with this permanently. We are not leaving the situation or problem unattended. We are not delegating it to others. Most, uh, we can say that almost all of the government is oriented to guarantee peace in the country. They were, the women were asking that the government be making an alert regarding the gender and it was like a manifesto. Are they going to activate the alerts regarding the gender and government? And another question, what guarantees do the um, um, newspaper people have to do coverage? Um, because, for example, when they were being attacked during the marches, because they couldn't come in and help because of what you said, nonviolence. But what guarantees are there for a newspaper person to give a live coverage during these? Um, because most of the um, um, <coughs> most people <coughs> were attacked. And they attacked. Some people got involved in the march that had nothing to do with that. It was the men that were attacking um, newspaper people. And what do you? What is the balance that you have? What can you tell us about what's happening in these nine months? <clears throat> All these matters. I repeat, are being attended by the chief of government. And we have all the confidence in her for Claudia. She's an intelligent woman. She's respectful to the, to the struggle of women. She's a hard worker. It's a woman of conviction, and it's, she's an honest woman. So we have all the confidence, and we know that she will continue to attend this matter.
It is a great support that Claudia is in charge of this matter. And she has all our backing. I am making a call out to all the manifestors that you are guaranteed your right to manifestation and protest, that you're free to free expression of ideas and the right to dissent. But we need to prevent violence, not aggravate or attack anybody, to self-limit yourself, self-control, and behave well. But more, more than tolerance, I appeal to your respect, that we respect others. and that we apply the principle of love thy neighbor, how are we going to be attacking someone? No hate. We have to behave responsibly and fraternally with a brotherhood and to respect the, the informational media and the uh, newspaper people. And we can even say that you can have maybe differences with, with media uh, of information, with newspaper people. For example, at first, we're in a new phase. It's not the same as before. How are we going to be anchoring, our, anchoring ourselves in the past? And then look, we would want to have vengeance to, as to what they did in the past? Imagine that. How many things did they do to the president? Am I going to be thinking of vengeance? He says, I wouldn't be able to govern, nor would I be happy. So therefore, we need to put these things aside, these vengeances. We're in a new phase. We're inaugurating a new phase of the public life in the country. So I respect all the media. And the other thing is also, let's suppose that there is <clears throat> like anger oh. or pending oh. accounts with the media that we can't get over that and I invite you I evoke you to, to get over it all these differences to better them so let's let's suppose that it's hard for us that it's very hard work to, to give a deal or a treatment that's different to the information uh, media for communication. What fault do the newspaper ha uh, paper have? The news people have, they go do their job. They go take notes. How are you going to be attacking them? So I believe that the saint, like the saying says, there is no bad that doesn't come for something good to come out of it. Yes, it was lamentable what happened, but it will help so that all will change so that you could take these great lessons from this way of 
a proceeding. Because I believe that those that had these movements that um, create these manifestations, that they're going to act responsibly now. And I believe in that, that not to stigmatize anything. And that is why I insist it's very important to not repress. Even if the conservatives like it a lot, they say the law is the law. My hand is not going to shake. Hypocrites. No, no, no. Dialogue. Reconciliation. We're going to change with the um, route of concordance. And these cases will be given, but in general, I'm going to say it. And let's see, I'm even going to tell you ahead that in my, that the people is ha are happy. They're very, very happy. There's an ambient of happiness. The people are very happy. Very, very happy. They're cheerful. So there's no bad mood. So it's over. But Mr. President, they should investigate who's a, those that were attacking, of course. Claudia is going to be handling that. That's what she's going to uh, be taking on. And my solidarity with the media and with the uh, newspaper people and the media. So what is the, um, uh, the balance uh, regarding the, it's not that I want to uh, boast, but we are listened to because it's a circular dialogue and they watch us in the whole country. There's some that tell us in the most remote areas. They say, I wake up or I will not miss it, the morning um, conventions. And so, yes, they watch us. So what are you going to say regarding the versions that have been circulating in the last few days that people from your own movement of Morena that went to power in this party since 2014 that are now are sending their pe uh, newspaper people that in this circle of uh, dialogue, there's people here that are not really newspaper people, that they have a representative that's making questions that have to, nothing to do with the agenda of periodism. But they also have sent people here to the conference. What about these versions of periodism? Yes, that's possible that there's people that are not professional of periodicals or newspapers or news media, or they don't work in this noble uh, job of periodicals, but, or news, but it's not the rule, as you know. It's the exception. The truth is, is that you can all participate freely. There is no simulation. Remember how it used to be? That they would even give you the questions that you could ask? No, he says, have you sent these people by the government to ask the questions? No. 
they do not give you, give you uh, question? No. 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 First of all. Second. Second point. There's no consignment. All of you can talk. I try to raise your hands. Uh, so we need to have more people to participate. That's the second part. And the third thing is, which is very important, which is very important, let's say, like if we were attorneys, to accept with conceding. That let's say that if we had some arrangements, but I'm telling you there isn't, then that that isn't true. That is false. So then what would we do this for? We're not simulators. We are not the same to those that were here before. We are not the same as the polit corrupt politicians of the neoliberal period, to be more clear. But I want it all to be just referred to the pre uh, previous six years. This took 36 years. That is neoliberalism, like porfirismo. Porfirismo was 34 years, and neoliberalism was 36. But let's see. The most important part of all, when had you ever seen a conference like this open? Never before. They, would, they wouldn't even let you get close to the president. Not only that, they were conferences and flyers. And I told you one time, it was even embarrassing that you would read a newspaper and you would look for another, like to get information, like in another one. But it was the same thing. It was like flyers. You, they would open it up from the newspaper. They they would open the same note in that was sent by the government. They kept using the same one everywhere. So now, don't tell me that, like that's the same, because that makes me angry, heats me up. That would be good to analyze. Every day here with you guys? And let's see. Our, oh, there is one matter that need, you need to take into account because it's part of the rearrangements. Before, all the media that participated were the media let's say, of conventional uh, uh, media. There weren't the web people. Now we have people from uh, those that, that have their own media. It could be a newspaper person. He might have a media, his own media because they inform via the Internet that didn't used to exist before. They would say, let's see, only these stations, these radio stations, these newspaper could, were allowed. Now, the same number, if not more, of conventional media They're the same amount in the web or more, the social web. Here, right now. 
that's a new reality. It is no longer to have the exclusive where the president would only go to the major media. Now, it's more horizontal. And we go with everyone. Everything's the same. And it's very good. Because the people are becoming informed. Yes, I can guarantee to you that there's a lot more information than before. It can be guaranteed more, the right to information in the whole country. You know more things, and nothing is silenced anymore. All of it is informed, and there's more transparency. So as, as of your point of view, there's more app, uh, openings or coverage. Will they continue these that were sent by these people? He says the ones that are sent by saved representatives. He says, yes, the press is regulated by the press. Let's go to the liberal time. This phrase that was attributed to I think he said Leiva that was very popular in the press. I think Madero uh, more than anyone. He exceeded himself with him. That was a tactic that the press had in history. It was a black mark. But they used to say in that period of the liberals and that the press was p controlled by the press with liberty. So we are not going to have here a table that says identify yourself. Yes. There's got to be some kind of form to register yourself, but but not to have a select group, but let it be the most plural or open possible that they be here participating. There's those that would not like to have this. They said they're tired of the morning uh, meetings. But he says, well, too bad. They're going to have to tolerate it or forgive us for the bother that we cause you. But that's, that's on you if you miss it out, because there's some interesting things that are happening. There's information that's first rate. It's not just what I inform you, but it's also the questions or the things when they ask me, what you guys investigate and let people know. Thank you, Mr. President. And now a female. He says, now it's the turn of a woman. OK because we need to take them into account. So today he's going to ask all the ones that, he, that have never talked before. So he wants them to ask questions. OK, go ahead. OK, he says, excuse me, Sara. Um, two points that you were mentioning, uh, security. And in Sonora, we've been three months where every week there's three to five homicides. And I want to know, what more are you going to do? Our governor said they were going to be meeting with Durazo. And what are they going to do to better security? They have just had, in Sonora, the Secretary of Security and Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Marine about a week ago. And I'm going to go also 
in Hermosillo. And we're going to be there on uh, the 2nd of September on Monday. And there, we're going to celebrate the National uh, Meeting of Security on Monday, 2nd of September in Hermosillo, from 6 to 7 in the morning. It's the time in Hermosillo. And then the, the conference of the press from 7 to 8 in Hermosillo. We'll be there. And we will give information regarding what the uh, crime uh, and violence is there. And then, of course, in the rest of the country. What, what can you comment regarding uh, Sonora that we are attending the problem in Sonora and the whole country? I could t even tell you that it is not Sonora in, within the states of the country with the most violence. It does not mean that there is not violence. I'm just underlining that it's not as one of the unfortunate that occurs in, in uh, the northern part in Baja California, and in particular Tijuana. It is not like Guerrero, Jalisco, Guanajuato, like Veracruz. These are states that where we have more problems of insecurity and violence. But when we go to a state, we went about, a well, a little while ago, and we were in Cahuila, Durango, and we informed in the case, uh, for example, of Durango, we made a report. And I uh, was very happy that they had not presented, and it had been months, that they hadn't had any um, kidnappings it allows us to be able to see what's happening in every state. And we're going to be there soon. What about uh, tourism security? What are you going to give me regarding that? It's got problems that are linked to nar narcotic trafficking. What can you comment regarding that? How you've seen well, I consider that we do not, in the case of Sonora, nor in other states, any alerts of grave um, problems so as to not go to visit Sonora or to visit other states. Yes, you can still visit the whole country. The whole country. You can still go there. That's what I can comment. So now, women and men that have never asked before, that have never asked before, he wants somebody. Okay, you. He pointed at someone. But it's not your first day coming, but that has never. <laughs> okay. Jesus Medina. He's from MX Express. What I was commenting regarding tolerance to protest in Morelos, it appears that it's not going there, this tolerance. The opposer of thermoelectric 
are being attacked and followed and persecuted. And we have the homicide of someone and they're being accused by the Federal Commission for something about the walls. In Morelos, there's a different tolerance. Another question. And yesterday, saw the people of uh, Notimex said they've been 14 days, said that they've broken their agreement. What's going on with them? What's going to happen with, with Notimex? Are they still letting people go? And is there a, a uh, ceiling so that it, the people won't be affected? So the place, oh, uh, thermoelectric of um, Huesca? Because there was some kind of consult. They didn't do anything. And the people voted that they start the thermoelectric but there's some um, stays and protests. And so the work has been stopped or held. And that is one of those things to think about, that you can consider with everyone. It's a work that was done by the previous government, the ducts of uh, thermoelectricity, they need about 100 meters to connect it. And it's been an investment of more than 20,000 million pesos. And the thermoelectric area uh, is used to uh, illuminate all of Morelos. But contrary to what you've just said, they do not use force. And we are not going to proceed until until there's acceptance from the people. This SCFE has because yes, we have to, but it is not applied this sanctioning. No judicial matter is being applied. They, we are not repress, repressors, and we are not the same as to the previous government. So our adversaries, including our, the uh, conservative scheme, because there's a lot of conservatism, that they don't agree with us, and they would like us to fail. And they uh, uh, put their hands together and move them back and forth. Imagine the rain of communication from the extremists, from the extreme right and the extreme left, where they meet, where these two extremes meet. That's why I say the conservatives of the left. Imagine the rain that would come down. See? See, you said you weren't the same. Repressors. Stop violence. Yes, I know them very well. And I know their double discourse, their hypocrisy. So no, we are not the same. Where it has to do with Morelos, it is left to your conscience for everyone because it's the responsibility of everyone. They want us to be converted into old uh, pieces of junk. Thermoelectric will become a piece of junk. It will become a junk field because we are not going to repress. However, they have to assume their responsibility. They say that it's a foreign company. 
No, it's the Federal Commission of Electricity. It's a company that belongs to all our the Mexican people that we are rescuing. So what happens if that uh, plant never comes into operation? So then you have to buy the electric energy from foreign places. So then I'm asking to be sensible, to act with responsibility, and it's very lamentable the assassination of this uh, person, but it has nothing to do with the government. The government does not violate human rights. It has stopped being the state that was the principal violator of human rights. This is a lamentable crime that originates by other reasons that I, I am hopeful that someday they will clarify that and find out who uh, and, you know, uh, bring them to justice, the ones that are responsible. But, yes, it, it's very sad, you know, that they would, um, that they would kill someone to put, it's immoral that they would have done that just to raise the flags, and that's a conservative thing. It is not from the leftist people. It's for, from the conservatives. So all these things need to be clarified. And I will also take the opportunity to to let you know, because they are saying that they're going to amplify more uh, municipalities that are autonomous, and they're welcome. Go for it. Because this means work and it'll benefit the communities and the people. The only thing that we do not want is violence. But with liberty, go and work. Have a conscience and support the people. More acts. And regarding Notemex, uh, and he says less recourse, uh, uh, theory and practice, thinking and action. That's what we are auspiciando, aus recommending. And so regarding Notemex, we're going to ask for information. And there is also, well, I'm going to take advantage of this. Yesterday I couldn't, uh, regarding an act. And because as it happens, that the conservatives or opposers have converted austerity as as if it were limitations of the fundamental things. Yes, their austerity, that's why there's no medicine. There's austerity, and that's why, that's why they're not renewing the medical equipment in the hospital. So there's austerity, and that's why you are letting our workers go. This is all false. All false. What is austerity? It's to reduce, like we have the elevated uh, salaries of the high functioning officials. What is austerity? It's that the president, that he makes less than half than what uh, com uh, Peña Nieto made without compensations. What is austerity? That's 
that we no longer use a presidential airplane, that we don't go in helicopters and airplanes that were private. Isn't it austerity to to not give a total of five million to the ex-president a month? Is it austerity? not to have private attention, medical attention for high-functioning officials that even stretch their faces at the expense of the people. Is it austerity that, that we don't spend 5,000 million pesos to maintain special boxes of savings to benefit the high-functioning officials? Is it austerity that the president is not having 8,000 uh, officials assigned to take care of him or security? Is it austerity to save 150,000 uh, million saved by the expenses of the government? So what is austerity? It's that the functioning official should learn to live in the just medium and not to be wasteful. That you cannot have a government that's rich with the people that are poor. That austerity that's Republican that has to do nothing with the neoliberal uh, austerity. It's the one that permits that 8 million of adult, uh, elderly adults have a pension, that a million of disabled children have capacity, uh, have a pension. And that austerity is what allows us to give 10,000 million grants to students that are impoverished. That austerity, that is what is permitting that we have the money to contract people to to make the uh, National Guard to protect the people. So we need to clarify it. Yes, of course. They're not happy with it. The ones that were living without working, the ones that were making 700,000 a month. But of course they're not happy. But they have to go. They need to figure it out, that it's not going to happen like that anymore. That's the same thing with the media. Formerly, formerly they used to get 10,000 million pesos, and now maybe four. And we're even thinking about that. We're, it's not a repression. We're thinking that, that maybe we're going to we can save more than that. So, so it has nothing to do with letting people go, their job. It has nothing to do with that. On the contrary, imagine, there's 900,000 youth today working as apprentices. When had you ever seen that before? When? Never. So then, that's it. That's enough of manipulations. See, for example, if there were scientists that used to live a life of luxury, but they didn't even investigate, really. But they were just famous people that had been, that they had not even worked in investigation. They were bureaucrats that were being supported in the government to simulate that they were supporting science, technology, what is in, uh, the innovation, the technical uh, innovation. But now there's no more because we're giving it directly this year. Contrary to what they think, 10,000 grants. 
for uh, students that are getting their doctorates from Conacyt. 10,000 new grants. So this is thanks to combating corruption and austerity, the Republican austerity. And in the case of Notimex, that they're going to continue to be attended to, we're going to inform them how it's going regarding this matter. But if there's no reason, no, no. we're not going to back down. It's the case of organization, of the so-called uh, social uh, civic. Imagine how much waste was done in uh, this creation of these bureaucratic uh, bureau, uh, apparatus. They had a constellation of offices with a parallel government that was supposedly autonomous and they put a new office and then they they would contract professionals. In general, all of them were conservative to earn two to three hundred thousand a month and they would fill up these offices and they're still there. Like the Institute of Transparency, one thousand million pesos a year. It was a government that was being supported by the people and was useless. A government that was on top of itself and all the money that was the budget that was supposed to be for the people or they would steal it or it would stay with, within the government so that they could finance privileges of the bureaucracy, of this golden bureaucracy. That ends. We are not going to back down. That was an excess, an abuse. And all of this was because that's how they controlled. It was the maximum of Porfirio Diaz. They would be uh, spreading the, uh, he used to say that uh, rooster wants corn and they would throw the corn to him. In other words, the money. And then the, the rooster would no longer crow. So if there was an opposer, they would do it like that. They said it's either going to be uh, money or guns, or plomo is uh, lead. So they would say either silver or lead. So then, so or they would lock them up, or they would um, make them go away. So this is not what's going on now. Here, no. Here we have liberty. Imagine that, to maintain a syndicate or a union. How much have we saved in the revision of the contract in BEMEX? They haven't said anything or very little. 1,600 million pesos is what they've saved. That's a lot. So now I'm letting you know ahead of time because it's almost time to end. I'm letting you know in advance some information that I consider important that we're continuing the negotiation with the companies that got the contracts to create the gas ducts. We're talking about thousands of millions of dollars. And I'm letting you know in advance that possibly in this week, we'll come to an agreement. And we'll come to this agreement because the companies have accepted the dialogue 
and the revision of the condition of the contract that we've considered. I'm not going to say the word anymore, but say excessive. And they demonstrated their disposition to come to an agreement so that we wouldn't have to go to tribunals. And there is one company, a Mexican one, that took the first step that was exemplary. We are going to inform on the weekend because it's still not done or this negotiation. But we're on a good route, and, and this will mean a great savings that is very important for public hacienda. Or, yes, I expect so, that we will be able to sign it on Thursday because we'll go out on Thursday, we're going to Chiapas, and we're going to be in Tabasco. In the weekend, we're going to be in Chiapas and Tabasco, and we're going to be leaving on Thursday. So maybe we'll sign it, if we can, on early on Thursday. Here, hopefully, that we can do it. But if it takes too long, like if it's delayed, because it seems to have a very good ambience, but we'll still handle it by next week. But it's going very well. It's very good notes that we come to an agreement or arrangement with this matter. So thank you very much. Next time, tomorrow, I'm going to let you know right now. Those that never have asked questions, those that have never asked questions are going to ask. And yes, of course, when they come tomorrow. But the ones that have been here a long time and that they have never asked any questions, or they've raised their hands and I hadn't called them. Because I want to try and be to be current. I don't want to be unjust. Oh, yeah. Yes. I want to leave as a manifesto that there is no consignment to persecute anyone. I have just mentioned it all that did harm to us need to be treated with respect and above all they should not be utilized these institutions should not be used to affect anyone. There doesn't have, there's no reason for there to be any partial uh, partiality or repression. I say this because of what happened in relation to uh, Mr. Almada. He himself confessed in his own time, this, which is public dominion, it's already old news, because they even have a video uh, 6th of July uh, channel they did some kind of report, and he himself 
confessed that he he met with Salinas and Ceballos to to do injury to me or to persecute me. It's not an invention. But however, I have no any purpose to have vengeance of an, on anyone. Not even Salinas. That not just because of him have we been affected. Even before that, I still recall that when Peña won, he declared that he had been days without taking the smile from his face, that he had to go to a plastic surgeon because he was so happy. And then the major damage, Salinas was the father of a modern inequality. But nothing, no rancor, no vengeance. In other words, he's not holding a grudge. Yes, it's a matter of the district attorney. Today I spoke of that at the meeting, asking with all respect that the judicial uh, people um, no that they not apply the law in a fictitious way or selectively. That if there is someone who uh, complains, let all, the, all of them go in course, but without distinction. because it's even convenient that there be no um, holding back, but that they be all of them, that they not fall into the error of acting like before, that they only persecuted and jailed the uh, the adversaries and the opposers, not those that fell from grace, from the president, or from the uh, uh, empowered. This is a very serious matter. And we're going to continue to act in the same way. And of course, it's the same thing. The conservatives, first they think like that we're like them. <laughs> the lion thinks that they all belong to their, uh, to their um, club. And the second thing is is that he wants them to know that we're not factious, that they're doing their role of manipulation, to, to, to defame, but that is what liberty is. That's how democracy is. This needs to be handled by the proper authorities. 
They've already asked me before, and I've already answered the same thing. I will not give my opinion regarding that. We're talking about a new era, independence. Why am I going to get involved in things that do not correspond to me? They belong to the judicial branch or, or to the attorney general. Or would you like things to be like they were before? Let's see, would you like it to be like before? Answer. Okay, you guys, goodbye. And they said no, they don't want it to be like before. Bye.